problem like this. Main first thing I'd like you guys to do is first um, go ahead and draw a picture. All right, the whistle is done. So whenever we're talking about bearings, ladies and gentlemen, we want to make sure that we start with our due north, east, southwest. Now remember, it says a bearing of 170 degrees. Um, that's going to be from due north. So that's going to be somewhere, well, halfway around circle is 180. So 170 is going to be like right there. And then we'll go down, right? And let's call this vector uh, A. Okay, now vector A has a magnitude of 460 miles per hour. 460, I'm just going to use. Um, is our miles per hour, is it going to be our magnitude of this vector? Gotcha? Compiche, comprende, understood there. Now, the next thing on this vector is we have our wind is blowing. And the wind is blowing at 200 degrees at 80 miles per hour. Well, again, if 180 is here, then 200 is going to be a little bit past that, right? But the magnitude is not as big as 460. Our magnitude is now only 80. So I'm not going to make a vector that's as big. Maybe just do something like that. And let's call that vector w. Okay, And that has a magnitude of 80. All right. Now, for basically what they're asking us to do is, given this information, first find the component form, for, find the component form of the velocity of the airplane, which was the exact same question as 42, right? So as long as you did 42, you could do 44. So if we look at this, we have A, which is here's 170. We need to find the, the component form of this. Well, here's the big issue. You're, when you type in 170 degrees, if I was going to say, hey, draw an angle that's 170 degrees, this is not the vector, this is not the angle you guys would draw. You would draw it from standard position, right? So your calculator doesn't know bearings either. You can't type in bearing 170 degrees, and then your calculator is going to know. So what we need to do is we need to figure out what this, what this angle of this vector is in standard position. So if we know from here to here is 170, that means this is 10 degrees right there. Does everybody agree? Now let's just count. 90, 180, 270. So therefore, this angle is, excuse me, 280. Now the magnitude of my vector A, or vector A, is we only, the only thing we have is the magnitude and the angle, which is, I'm sorry, I forgot to write that in there. Hundred and ninety degrees. So if we only know the magnitude and the vector, do we have two ninety, thank you. Two eighty, thank you. Why? I forgot to continue it though, that's why. There you go. Because we're going from standard position, not due north. Um, so now if we're, but do we so we've talked about component form linear combination, and can we also write a vector given its magnitude and its direction? Yes. All you simply do is, for your vector, is take its magnitude and times by the cosine of your angle times the sine of your angle. Huh? The component form of your vector when you're given the magnitude and its angle. So therefore, um, our magnitude in this case is going to be our speed. So that's going to be 460. And that's going to be the cosine times your angle. Now again, don't get trapped using this 170 degree bearing, because your calculator doesn't know 170 degrees is your bearing. It only knows the standard position, which is 280 degrees. I mean, you could use the negative form of that, but let's just get into the let's just get into the form of using always the positive angle. All right. So now we just need to simplify this using our calculator. Um, so you can just multiply that through. So you just do the cosine of 280 times 465. And when you have a nice little calculator, and you go and add them up, so make sure your calculator is in degree mode. And you just type in cosine of 280 times 460. And, I'm just, and I get 79. 0.878, I'm going to round to the nearest thousandth, and then I do sine of 280, and then times 460, and I get negative 453.012. Okay. Now, let's look at this. Let's look at our picture. Does this look like the component form of this vector? We're going positive, and then we're going negative. 
how far to the right we did is much smaller than how far down we went. Does that kind of look about right? And obviously, what I'm telling you guys is when you're doing a problem like this, what if you get positive, positive? Would you realize that, uh-oh, I made a mistake if you're all, all the way up here, right? Or if you had like a negative for the x and positive for the y. Does that make sense? So just make sure you guys kind of understand what you're So that was part A, which was also your answer to 42. Now what we need to do is find the component. So now the next question is find the actual ground speed and direction. Uh, or I'm sorry, find the actual yeah, ground speed and direction of the airplane. So we have the airplane. And now we're looking in for, well, what happens when both, um, both forces are not acting on the plane? So basically what we're looking for is the resultant vector of the wind and the plane. So we're basically looking to adding my vector w onto this vector and seeing what the resultant vector is going to be. Uh, let's use a blue to my blue. I don't have my blue markers anymore. Seriously? I don't have one blue marker. Yes. Yep. So are you using like two hundred or are you using one fifty because it's the bearing position? No. One seventy is the bearing. This is standard position. Standard position is from the positive x axis. Bearing is from due north. So 170 degrees due north from due north is takes us right there. Which I found out to be 10 degrees away from the y axis. Right? So, oh, if I'm like, oh, well, from here to here is only 10 degrees. Well, from here to here is 90. Here to here is 180. Here to here is 270. And if I just have to go an extra 10 degrees, then that's 280. That's how I got that. Does that make sense? OK. So now what I'm going to be looking for is this resultant vector. So to do that, that means I need to find the component form of my wind. Well, again, if wind had, um, now we, that means we need to find out what's my, the wind has a magnitude of 80, but we got to figure out what the angle is again for the wind. So let's see, this was at 200 degrees, right? So from here to here is at 200 degrees. So how far is that away from here? If halfway around, from due north, halfway around is 180, and you go to 200 degrees, that means this is at 20. Does that make sense to everybody? No? Here you start at due north because it's a bearing. Here's 90. Here's 180. The angle says 200. So if you're at 180, to go to 200, you've got to add 20. So that means this angle right there, that little sliver, is 200. OK? Now, we're looking for the angle, though, in? Huh? That's what we call the angle for wind. You were kind of not here for when we started the problem. So W represents the vector for the wind. So these are just me naming the two vectors, OK? Um, so here is my angle. So that's 20 degrees. And then again, we, have to, we, don't, we can't plug 20 degrees in our cut. We have to use standard position. So from here to here is 90. Here to here is 180. Here to here is 270. But we went kind of we have to go back 20 degrees, right? So we're at two, 250. So my vector w, which represents my um, vector w, which represents my wind, is equal to the magnitude of w times the cosine of theta times sine of theta. Same form, it's just different vectors. So what is the magnitude of w or the wind? We said was 80. That's in the problem. And then the angle is not 200 degrees, though. Again, this is the most common mistake. It's not the bearing. The angle is your component form, which we said was 250. Well, let me actually just put that in there. 250 degrees. So therefore, you have cosine of 250 degrees times sine of 250 degrees. And you got that from 250 minus 20. Right, 270 minus 20. Yep. So now, let's plug in our calculator to see what the component form of that is. So I do cosine of 250 times 80. And that gives me negative 27.362. And then I do sine of 250, ooh, sine of 250 times 80. 
and I get negative 75.175. Again, I'm just rounding to nearest thousand. But again, guys, let's look at this. Does this make sense? Does that, does that look like that vector, that green vector? It's negative, negative horizontal component, negative vertical component. Is it much smaller than my four six than my other vector? Right? So you guys can see how it kind of makes sense a little bit, right? But now what we need to do is our final, or still not even, we still haven't done anything with this blue vector. The blue vector is A plus W. And that's what we call the resultant vector. So resultant vector is equal to my A, which represented my airplane vector, plus the wind. So from your previous homework, when you're adding vectors, all we do when adding vectors is add the first two components and then add the second two components. So if here's A, if here's A, and then here's W, let's just add the two components. So A plus W will be 79.878 plus a negative 27.362, comma, second component, negative 40, no, negative 453.012 plus a negative 75.175. And then I just get my calculator and I add those two numbers up. Um, if you're obviously not rounding, you would be storing these two values, which is not too bad. You would just store them together. So here I get 52.516. And then over here I get negative 453.0012 plus negative 75.175. And I get negative 528.187. Now, does that resultant vector sound about right? Does that look about right? Yeah. Think about it, guys. You have this plane, right? This plane's going down. Here comes the plane. You have this wind that's pushing it like this. So you have your plane, and then you have wind pushing it down, right? So it's now going to be going over to the right, and it's going to be going a little bit faster because it has a wind at its back. You guys agree with me, it's easier to run when you have wind at your back than wind at your face, right? Yeah. So it should be going faster, right? And if you have wind pushing it, it's gonna be going over this way a little bit. And so if you look at 552, so it's not as far right as it originally was, but it's going faster than it originally was, right? So that makes sense, we're doing our math correctly. Yes? Do you, under, do you agree with me from here to here is 20 degrees? So that's the bearing though. That's from, that's the green from there. That's to, either way, standard position, 90, 180. Do you agree with me from there to there is 180? Do you agree with me to the next one's plus 90, which is 270? But you're not at 270, you're at 20 degrees left, which is 270 minus 20 would be 250. That's where I got the 250. Yes. It's the bearing. Sorry, I didn't write it in there, but I th it says in the book a bearing of 200 degrees. I didn't write it down. It says bearing. In the book, in your book at Prom, it says a bearing of 200 degrees. That tells you to go from due north, not from standard position. The 200 degrees came from due north. Yeah, I, I didn't write it in there, and I'm sorry, but your book explicitly says a bearing of 170, a bearing of 200 degrees. That tells you to start from due north, not to start from standard position. So if you start from due north and you go to 200 degrees, and there's a minus 20 from there to power down, that you get the 250. Yes. Okay. So it's kind of two different angles. But the problem with bearings is we use bearings a lot in navigation, but the problem is your calculator has no idea about bearings. So you have to convert everything kind of the standard position. OK? Um, yes. We're not done. We're not, we haven't even answered a question yet. Because <laughs> the question says, find. So we found, the, we found the component form of our vector. But now the question says, find its magnitude and direction. 44. 
So when we got to find the magnitude and the direction of this vector, basically now, ladies and gentlemen, what we need to do is know our two formulas. So the magnitude of a vector, and I'm going to call my vector r as a resultant vector, is equal to the first component squared plus the second component squared. So what I'm going to do is just take 52.516, um, square it, and then add it to negative 528.187 squared. Now, when you guys are going to take your quiz today, please make sure you guys are telling me what you're typing into your calculator. Because if you type this in your calculator, and if you just make one little mistake on your calculator, but you don't tell me what you put in your calculator, it's very hard for me to determine, did you make a minor or a major mistake? Would you guys agree? Yeah. But if I see this, and then I could say, oh, this student knew exactly what they were supposed to type into the calculator. They, just might, they must have forgot the negative, or messed a parenthesis, or whatever else. So that's like an A mistake. That's a very minor mistake, right? Um, and I wouldn't mark you down. But if I don't see anything, it's kind of hard to see what, what you did wrong. So just make sure you're using parentheses, especially when you're dealing with negatives. So when I find the magnitude here, I have 530.791 miles per hour. And does that sound about right? Yeah, that sounds about right, right? Now the next thing is we've got to find the angle. And this is where it gets really confusing, and it's going to come up. It's going to come up on the quiz. For any vector, tangent of theta is equal to your second component divided by your first component. So to find my angle here, theta equals tangent inverse. And my second component here is negative 52 or negative 528.187 divided by 52.516. So now I'll just do tangent inverse of negative 528.187 divided by 52.516. I get negative 84 degrees. But if you give me negative 84 degrees, you are going to be wrong for what I want. Okay, now, you guys have to understand where negative 82 degrees is coming from. Um, it does, now, technically, in the book, it doesn't really clarify. It says give its direction. So negative 84 degrees is technically correct, right? There's really nothing wrong. Negative 84, negative 84 degrees is basically giving you this angle right here, right? So that's not bad. Um, but what I'd like you guys to do is, for when you guys are giving your direction, give it to me from standard position in positive form. So give me the exact same answer, but in the positive angle. So that's going to be 360 minus um, that answer. Well, plus that answer, right? Yeah. Oh, shoot. What'd you get? Okay, And the other thing I just want you guys to be aware of too, James, is what if it says, give me the direction in bearings? Well, then you guys need to understand, oh, my calculator is giving me this as negative 84, but I need to add 90 to it as a bearing, right? So my bearing would be um, 174.3 172 degrees. Do you guys understand how, the bear, how that can change? All I got to do is change wording in my question, right? Or you could also do, you could figure out what that is, that little angle, which would be 180 plus that, so it'd be 5.682 or whatever, 90 minus 84.322. Or you could say south, 5.678 degrees due east. That'd be another way of giving the bearing. That's basically going from due north. So from there to there is 90, and then from there to there is 84 degrees. Because in bearings, that 80 clockwise is positive. Okay? Um, 
Yes, it's a big problem, but explaining it took me 20 minutes.